Hey, what's up guys? I hope you're hungry. In this video, I'm going to review the stock of JM Smucker Company and Conagra Brands. Now, you're probably familiar with both of these companies. They own tons of brand names in the grocery store aisles. You've probably seen them. I'm going to be looking at their balance sheets, going to look at their growth, look at their profitability, ultimately use an intrinsic valuation model and try and figure out which one is the better deal Conagra Brands or JM Smucker. So let's get started. Alright guys, so here is Conagra Brands website. You can see all of their brands. They got Slim Jim, Hunts, Ketchup, Marie Callender's, Ready Whip. Lots of stuff you know about. Orville Redenbacher's, gotta love those. And a whole lot more you don't see pictures of up here, including things like Hungry Man and Hebrew National. For JM Smucker Company, they split everything into three distinct segments. You got coffee, you see all the coffee brands here. You've got things like consumer foods, and they have tons of these. You got Jif peanut butter, lots of things you're probably familiar with here including the, the namesake there, Smucker's Jams. And you got you got pet foods. You got Nine Lives, Gravy Train, Kibbles and Bits, Meow Mix, you know, all the usuals. So JM Smucker is pretty much 100% U.S. company, just 7% from other places. As far as their revenues and profits by segment here, there's a surprisingly large amount coming from U.S. retail pet foods. That is worth noting. U.S. retail coffee is also pretty heavy in there. And a lot of the brands we went through that we're pretty familiar with surprisingly account for a relatively smaller portion of their total revenues. You can also see their profits in green there. Now for Conagra brands here, you can see they have several segments but really dominated by two, refrigerated and frozen foods and grocery and snacks. International is pretty low and food service is also pretty low there. Now I'm not going to present data on their geographic sales because they're pretty much a 100% US company. Let's compare the dividends. Here we got JM Smucker yielding about 2.8%. The payout ratio is only 40%, which is nice to see. That means they're keeping 60% of their profits and reinvesting them back into the company, maybe even doing share buybacks. The five year dividend growth rate is about 6.2%, and they've grown the dividend for 18 straight years, which you like to see that kind of consistency. For Conagra Foods, they're yielding 2.86%, almost the same thing. Payout ratio is almost exactly the same. But their track record is not nearly as good. They got a 4.6% five-year growth rate. And their dividend growth streak is only one year. So they must have had to pause their dividend raises or even cut it recently. Let's have a look at the balance sheets of J.M. Smucker and Conagra Foods. First of all, they're pretty similar as far as leverage, with Conagra Foods having a little bit higher leverage there. You notice with the debt to assets and liabilities to assets ratios. Liquidity is pretty similar. Um, if you don't know any of these ratios, you can look at them in the description below. But very typical for someone in their industry to have pretty low liquidity ratios there. You like to see above one. It's not quite one. Uh, it's not as bad as it looks. Again, their industry typically has lower ratios. What you don't like to see are these low interest coverage ratios. Interest coverage ratio is a measure of how many times your earnings can cover your interest expense. For both companies, it's getting a little low there, especially Conagra though. 4.4, very low. We're going to have to see if that was a fluke year, if we had an abnormally low income. Uh, but right now, not a good sign. They're both very long-term asset intensive, 
but we're not talking about huge factories here. It's really brands on their balance sheets. So yeah, I don't love either company's balance sheet, but they're not horrible either. You know, a B minus or a C plus. So here we're looking at a DuPont analysis. If you don't know about that, you can check out my tutorial video on DuPont analysis in that description below. We're just going to break down return on equity into its three parts and just compare between the two companies. I got about five years worth of data to ensure that any one year is not skewing our results. So right away, I noticed that Conagra Foods has much higher ROE, an average of 16% compared to 11.2 for JM Smucker. Now, how do they achieve this? It's very important to look at that. It's really a few things. Number one, I see asset turnover of 0.66, much better than the 0.48 reported by JM Smucker. What this means is for every dollar of assets in place, Conagra Foods is able to generate 66 cents of sales revenue compared to just 48 cents for JM Smucker much more efficient. However, it's worth noting that JM Smucker has higher profit margins of an average of 10.9% compared to 8.5% for Conagra Foods. However, when you look at the leverage, the equity multiplier, it's fairly similar, but it does put Conagra Foods over the top there with 2.9 compared to 2.13 for JM Smarker average over the last five years. So as I look at the two companies, what I see is a, you know, a slight win for Conagra Foods. But I do like that for both companies, notice how net income margin is trending upward over the past three years or so. So that is a good sign for both companies. Here's some growth expectations for JM Smucker going forward. Pretty much no growth. You notice it's expected to go up or down about 2% or so. Really not moving anywhere. For Conagra Foods, they are going to have a big boost in earnings in their report coming out May this year. That's the expectation at least. Afterward, it's pretty similar to JM Smucker. Pretty anemic growth. All right, guys, at this point in the video, I typically use an intrinsic valuation model to try and value the companies. I will do that. I'm going to use the free cash flow to equity model, come up with a fair value for JM Smarker, come up with a fair value for Conagra Foods. Now, before we get into it, I will say that it's really not necessary in this example here because neither company is growing much at all. So you're looking at kind of a 0% growth rate for both companies, which means you can really just look at the P-E ratios. So if you take the P-E ratio, you flip it on its head, becomes the EP ratio or earnings yield. That can tell you what kind of return you're going to get assuming the earnings stay flat. So both companies are trading at about 14 and a half times earnings. So you take one divided by 14 and a half, that gets you about 6.9%. That's about the return you're gonna get for either company. But that's not to say they're the same investment. They're two very different businesses as we cover JM Smucker more into cat food and coffee. That is something to consider. But anyhow, we're going to go look at the spreadsheet, show you what the value is going to be under different growth rates, different discount rates, and let you decide for yourself. So here's our valuation matrix for JM Smucker. Every cell is the value of the stock given a certain discount rate or required rate of return and given a certain growth rate in free cash flows over the next five years. After five years, we'll just figure on about 1.5% growth in perpetuity. So, for example, if I'm looking at no growth, 0% growth here, 
and I'm looking at a 7% discount rate. The stock would be worth about $115.22 per share. Now, if I require a 9% rate of return, and I assume the stock can grow at 2% per year for their, their cash flows, it could be worth as much as $89.58. Still not going to be a good deal. The stock is priced way over that amount. You want to visualize things. Look at the matrix below. It tells you how much the stock is over or undervalued by relative to the stock price today of $128.50. So as you can see here, it is only undervalued if you want a 6% return on your investment. If you're looking for even a 7% return, eh, it looks to be fairly valued, maybe a little overvalued depending on your assumptions there. If you want more than that, you're really not going to get it with the stock. Let's compare to Conagra Foods. For them, their growth rates are a little more optimistic, still not great, you know, anywhere from 1% to 4% for the next five years. Afterward, I'm again assuming about a 1.5% growth rate in cash flows in perpetuity. Pretty similar picture, guys. Uh, I don't know which sell is most likely. I'm a little more conservative. I might stay in these two, these two columns over here. Uh, no matter how you slice it, it's not really that great of a deal when the stock's trading at 38.50 today. You can see that in the matrix below here. It's undervalued, again, only if you want a 6% return. If you want more than that, it's not going to do it for you. All right, guys, here are my final thoughts on these two stocks. My first thought is I generally like food stocks. They're very easy to understand and people have to eat. So I'm generally in favor of them when I can get them for a good deal. They're really not a good deal right now from the analysis I've done. I don't view either stock as particularly risky. Neither one has a bad balance sheet. It's not amazing though. Uh, but both stocks really, they're not going to do much for you relative to, you know, putting your money in an index, putting it in, you know, preferred stock, any kind of investment like that. So for me, it's not exciting enough. I don't think I'm going to buy either one. That's just me personally though. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please give me that thumbs up. It really helps out the channel. And let me know what you're going to do with these stocks in the comments below. Thank you for watching.